So um, I'm going to present you um, where we are at at the moment with Firefox OS, what we did last year, what we are doing at the moment, and where what we're, where we're heading at for the next few weeks or months. And the very first thing I would like to talk about are the devices. So this has been the very big thing for 2013. We had one clear goal, ship a phone. So it's been sometimes frustrating because it was not a year where we could iron the code as much as we wanted. We, wa we wanted to have the features as quickly as possible, to test them as soon as possible with our partners, with the manufacturers, the operators. And it's been a success because we've, had, we've shipped three phones. The DT Open, that most of you might know already. The Alcatel uh, One Touch and the LG uh, FireWeb. So um, I've tried to prepare a pie chart to show you how it translates in terms of market share. But basically, this is how we're entering the battlefield. <laughs> so we're not a big threat yet, but we're on the battlefield. And that's what we wanted. So what's interesting about this, about this experience, is that those three little babies have been shipped to 14 countries, uh, mostly South America and Europe. And we're already, um, we have already 17 operators who are committed to ship a Firefox OS device pretty much all around the world. So we're not a big competitor in this battlefield yet, but we're there and we're about to be ready to be pretty much everywhere in the world. So that's been our big achievement for last year, and it's been quite a, quite a journey to get there. Besides these end-user devices, we have developer devices. Those two Geeks phones uh, have been presented here last year in this same room. Uh, we had the Telefonica community member who went to, to show those. And they're still working great as the developer devices. We sort of support um, other devices like the Nexus S and Nexus 4. It's not an official support. It's more a community-driven effort to make Firefox OS work on those. But it's not the point. We're a dedicated team. We're, we're not Google. So we're focusing on shipping phones and not on making Firefox OS work on existing devices. I know it can be frustrating. I hear this a lot, that people would like to install Firefox OS on their own device. They have an old Galaxy S2 or whatever that would like to reboot with Firefox OS. And no, I'm afraid the short answer is it's not easy to do it. So please bear with that. We're working hard to make Firefox OS a real competitor in, as a mobile OS. And I think we have some pretty good chance to make it happen. But this has a cost, and this cost is that we cannot afford working on making this work on other devices. So here's a technical overview of what we did last year in 2013. Um, I'm starting from the most visible changes to the most under the hood ones. So the first thing we've been doing has been to um, do some visual refresh. So on the left side, this is a Firefox OS 1.0 and 1.3 on the right side. So it's all a matter of details. We've lowered the contrasts. We've refined the icons. Um, all the status bar icons on the, on the above have been uh, switched to monochrome icons, which are much lighter on the eye. So it's uh, just a matter of refinement. I hope you'll like it. We've been doing a lot of work in communication apps. So I'm a bit biased here because I'm in this communication app team. But um, we've added last year some support from, for MMS, for conference calls for dual SIM, which is um, an important feature for the markets that we are targeting. And um, for you who want to use this as your 
um, test phone or your maybe your favorite phone or your unique phone. Um, there's been a very significant progress uh, regarding the contacts, import and export. It's now much easier to import existing contacts from Gmail, Outlook, or from your older device. All you have to do is to export your contact list as a vCard file. And we can import this, or we can re-export this as a vCard file. We can even write those contacts on the SIM card. I never saw this would happen, but it did. I'm glad it did. So now we're pretty much on par with the rest of the smartphones for the telephony part. So this is another, uh, this was a prerequisite to, to be able to ship phones. And this is where we're at at the moment. There's been a bunch of other app improvements. I'm not going to uh, list them all. We have some release notes. The most visible part is the new lock screen. So now there's only one gesture to unlock your phone instead of two gestures. We, if you've used 1.0, 1.1, you had to uh, split it both and then pick either unlock or camera. So this has been improved. The email app has been very much improved. Now we have mail notification. We support mail drafts. Uh, we have attachments. We can display and send attachments. We have a download manager to give you a list of the files that you've... Um, basically, it's interesting for all the files that, cannot, that you cannot open directly with a phone. Like if you're downloading a zip archive or whatever, which is not a, a media file, uh, this is where your file will end, in the download manager. Where when we started with 1.0 and 1.1, we were focused on one resolution, which was half HGA. And now we're supporting uh, multi-resolution displays. So there's been the Geeks phone um, peak, but uh, we're getting ready for other devices as well. And more in general, we've been doing a lot of work to improve the performance, mostly on startup time and on panning to have a smooth scrolling experience. We still have some room for improvement on this part, but we've already made some significant improvements. If you're still on 1.1, I suggest you to try 1.3. It feels much snappier already. Yes. 1.0, so when we started Firefox OS, uh, we were at these days on Gecko 18, it was the Aurora or maybe Nightly when we started uh, Firefox OS 1.0. And we've been stuck with this uh, branch for, well, one year, a bit more. So we had to draw a branch, which is called B2G 18, which is a branch of Gecko 18. And we've worked with this branch for a very long time. And starting with Firefox OS 1.2, We've moved to a 12-week uh, release cycle. As you know, Firefox itself has a six-week release cycle. So this means that every Firefox OS version comes with uh, ev ev uh, every even number of a Gecko version. So now we are on a much healthier release cycle. It means that we can benefit from Gecko improvements on a very regular basis. One of the things that have been missing in Firefox OS 1.2 and 1.1 was Flexbox, which has arrived in uh, Gecko 19, so close yet so far. So one year developing uh, mobile interfaces without Flexbox has been quite frustrating. So these days are over. If you are interested in contributing some code to Firefox OS now, uh, the good news is you're going to have a modern Gecko. What are the versions you're working on? Oh yeah, and this is uh, one of the, probably the most life-changing uh, the most life-changing tool we've had last year. The developer, uh, the DevTools team has been doing an awesome work. Um, the application manager allows you to do some remote debugging, remote inspecting on the device. I'm sorry I didn't prepare any demo because uh, I thought it would have been uh, presented earlier and there's no... Uh, but if you're interested in this, I can do a quick demo after, the, after this talk to see how it works. It's much, uh, much cleaner to, to work with this because you don't have to flash your phone and you just have to, um, 
to do some live edition on your, directly from your laptop, it's much more efficient. So if you've worked with Firefox OS 1.0, 1.1, and have been um, struggling with the flash and retry experience, those days are over, mostly. And this has been our Christmas gift. So uh, a synchronous pan and zoom. Um, the idea is to perform panning and zooming asynchronously on the compositor thread instead of doing it on the main thread. So obviously the idea is to have a smoother uh, panning experience. And um, we've landed this right before the Christmas break. You remember uh, pushing into production on Friday? That's what we did. For some reason, we have a few issues to fix on the front-end side now, but it's taking good shape. So um, you can enable or disable uh, this asynchronous pan and zoom thing from the developer settings. So I don't remember if now it's enabled by default or disabled by default. It's enabled by default now. So if you find some strange bug, it might be worth uh, to go to the developer settings panel, try to disable uh, asynchronous pan and zoom, and see if it fixes the bug. In this case, uh, you have the bug number to report uh, another APZ uh, glitch, but it's getting uh, pretty much sorted out at the moment. If you're interested in the technical part, um, have a look at the wiki. You'll probably have more information about that than what you wanted to have. It's pretty, pretty explanatory. I recommend uh, reading this. And now, Here's what we have in mind for 2014. So again, I'm not uh, going to give you the whole roadmap, which is on the Mozilla Wiki, but I would like to talk about um, one experiment. Well, it's more than an experiment now. It's a real project. It's called Haida. And it's, um, this is how we would like the user experience on a mobile device uh, to become. We would like this to be more webbish, to be more Mozillian. So we, instead of having uh, the, um, the current, we want to simplify the whole experience. We want to make the content more directly accessible. So we have a few items that have been identified. The first one are what we call edge gestures. So I'm sorry, we don't have any camera here to show how it works on the, on the big screen. So I hope you're going to be able to imagine how it looks like from this far. So this is a way about switching application. By, uh, <laughs> hey, impressive, huh? <laughs> Try to visualize some lens, it will be bigger. So we're just uh, swap, uh, swiping to get, to, to get from an application to another. This is the Alt tab. And besides the Alt tab, we have the um, Spotlight for Mac users, or the uh, Activities for GNOME 3 users, which we call the Rocket Bar. So this is a central point where you can search among the user's bookmarks, your history, the contacts, or hopefully uh, pretty soon the marketplace, everything not me. So one central point to access all your data. So if you're looking for a contact, for a web page, it's uh, the central place to enter two, three letters and see it complete. We are, this is the, the, the cool thing, well, one of the cool things about this project, we're uh, integrating the browser directly into the system so that won't be any browser app in itself. Everything is a browser. The whole device is the web. So this simplifies, this simplifies a lot the experience, and it makes it much more consistent, much more webbish. And um, this should be enabled in the next few weeks. And we also want to have better customization, making the home screen replaceable, and the lock screen to be customizable as well. So again, uh, you'll find more information on the wiki. It's still a moving target, so um, not everything is very well defined at the moment. 
But the good thing is, uh, you can already try the edge gestures and the rocket bar to see um, how it changes the experience. Um, you just need a recent build and uh, go to the developer settings panel, enable those two items, and uh, you're pretty much set. To make this happen, to make Haida happen, uh, we need new web APIs. The first one that we are working on is the data store API. So data store is about um, being able to share some data across several apps, which is not possible at the moment. So this is what we need to make this central search to make the rocket bar uh, work. So we have to make the data store API work properly. And we have to um, adapt the various apps to use the data store instead of their own APIs that they were using so far. So for Facebook contacts, uh, bookmarks, history. Um, I think it works already for the contacts, uh, not yet for the bookmarks. But again, you can follow uh, the progress on this bug. It's bug uh, 871445. And have a look at the web API if you want to, uh, if you want to help us hack on it. It will be more than welcome. Another big piece on the Gecko sides are the shared workers. So uh, you probably all know uh, web workers. If you don't, have a look. It's uh, the one way to uh, parallelize some task in JS. JS is basically a mono thread. So if you want to parallelize some task, you have to use some, some workers, some web workers. And we want to have shared workers to be, uh, so we could uh, call a worker from different apps. The corollary is that we want to enable web APIs in web workers. So there is a, a bug to track this, um, all these web APIs that are getting enabled in web workers. Most important, of course, data store index DB, but also device storage, uh, mouse contacts, TCP socket. There's a long list of web APIs that we want to enable in uh, those shared workers. It's getting prioritized. It's been prioritized, I think. So um, this is making good progress, and I hope uh, it will bring some enhanced experience for the end user in the next few months. And one of the common questions that we've had about this project is, where's the tablet? Where's the tablet UI? Remember the first goal for 2013, shape a phone. We don't have much time to work on the tablet UI. We haven't had much time to work on that last year. We're, we've been making good progress on the tablet UI. And what we would like to propose to you now is to help us building Firefox OS on tablets. So there's a lot of front-end work for web developers to do. There will be a lot of localization, of course. There will be a lot of user testing that will be more than appreciated on these devices. And to make this happen, Mozilla is proposing you to uh, provide you a 10-inch tablet, which is a reference device which is being built at the moment. We've seen the first prototypes. It should be ready um, quite soon. We can uh, help you technically uh, to uh, write patches, to um, provide sharp uh, feedback for user reports, or to help localize uh, our strings and help, or help identify what uh, points should be modified in the UI to fit the localization. And we are uh, preparing nightly builds to make sure that every day you can get the latest up-to-date state of the art uh, of the project. So this has been announced by Asa Dautler earlier this month, three weeks ago. Um, you'll get some news about that pretty soon. I recommend to check hacks.mozilla.org in the next few weeks and um, everything will be detailed in there. And I really hope uh, you'll be interested in this program because um, building Firefox OS has been uh, an incredible experience, but it will be an awesome experience to work with you guys on this common project uh, for the next year. That's really my wish for 2014. 
And that's it. If you have any question. So I'm sure you have some who wants to begin. <coughs> Very nice progress. Um, I'm wondering about uh, audio API. What is the latency for audio at the moment, and will you also have an audio API in, th in workers? Um, I'm not the right person for that. You know Paul Adeno, right? Oh, Paul. Somebody gave a microphone to this guy there. So, uh, the latency on cheap devices is terrible. Uh, it's around 100 milliseconds. If you get uh, a Nexus 4 and you run Firefox OS on it, it's extremely low. It's like around 20 milliseconds or something. Uh, I'm talking input or output. Uh, that is using the full-fledged Web Audio API, uh, which I'll be talking about later today. So this is while, for example, doing convolution on multiple threads and stuff like that, like crazy stuff. So, to me, it's good enough. If you don't agree, then you can probably talk to me afterwards. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's the plan. You know, uh, there is also a plan to run web audio in workers, but the spec is not done and the code is not done. So, feel free to contribute if you have something to contribute. Yeah, but there is a plan to do that because there is no way around it. Like, if you do audio, you need multiple threads. A, a, political, <coughs> a political question. Why in the marketplace uh, there isn't uh, an, uh, the indication um, for the app if the license of the apps? What was that, sorry? Uh, why in the marketplace uh, there isn't an indication, uh, the uh, license indication uh, for the apps? Oh, the license. Uh, no, no idea. It's, yeah. I agree, it's a bit of a pity. We, we have a big room for improvements on the marketplace. Personally, I'm more worried about the startup time of the marketplace, especially if you're on a flaky network. So uh, we have priorities. Uh, the marketplace is uh, not exactly in our team. It's, the, it's a common project across desktop and mobile. And uh, yeah, they have their own roadmap. And I agree, it's it's a bit, uh, a bit disappointing for us floss enthusiasts. They feel like it's not the most important information to put in front of a user, and I think I could second that. I'm more uh, worried about the permission that I'm giving uh, every app that I install on my phone. Um, I don't care as much as for a desktop app, if it's GPL or proprietary. I really do care about what it does with my data. So. On this aspect, we've been doing a good job because we have our webish security model, which, unlike Android, is not asking you to have all permissions from the start before installing your app, but every app asks for permissions as it requires them. So um, I would say most of the, well, for the average user, I think it's fair enough. But yeah, as a floss enthusiast, I agree with you. I would really like to see this. Of course, if you want to see the, some demos or to test some phones, there are some on the booth. Uh, Kaze also has one. So uh, you could ask questions to him after, in front of the room. Another question? You have, we have still one minute, okay? Yeah, so what are the biggest uh, challenges you as a developer of Fire Firefox OS are facing? Oh. <laughs> well, 
Uh, quite a lot. Uh, performance comes to mind first. Uh, we're trying to keep uh, very low memory usage and uh, to get some quick startup times. We're trying various hacks to improve the startup times and um, we're investigating um, a few possibilities uh, to be able to sandbox panels. And this is also part of the HIDA project to be able to sandbox every panel. So this is one of the big challenges that we are going to address next, uh, well, in this year. Um, I think another, another challenge, well, which can be perceived as a challenge for somebody that, who is entering this world, is that we don't have any standard design pattern like you could have on Java or even on uh, Angular.js apps. We want to be as closely as possible on the middle, so we want to have the best possible pref uh, performances. So we're not using uh, standard MV whatever frameworks. So it um, it gets some yeah. It can be frustrating for people who are very Java oriented. It's in thrilling for us who like to optimize everything, but that's another challenge: making uh, a culture around this approach. Thank you. Thank you so much.